Um, one thing that's a little bit different is that the efficiency Vermont rebate program has changed in the state of Vermont now that we're in 2023. So they don't give rebates on the lighting. What they do is they take the money off from the lighting proposal last time. So it's almost the exact same rebate. It should, the only difference is that um, before Efficiency Vermont would cut you guys a check. Now it's a point of sale rebate that you get when you purchase the fixtures at mm -hmm. the distributor. It's like I said, it's the exact same amount, but for whatever reason, there's just too much work going on in the state this year, so they can't do custom incentives. So everybody's getting their rebate. So that revised price reflects the reduction that uh, people are going to get from that uh, mm -hmm. smart light program that Efficiency Vermont's putting on. Um, asbestos abatement, um, that is what it sounds. Essentially, we'd be looking at doing the abatement inside that heat exchanger room. Um, we have some abatement to go in the boiler room, um, but for the most part, um, a lot of that insulation inside that gymnasium would remain. We're going to have to abate some of it to connect the new piping, but just to abate the gym alone, I was getting prices of upwards of $40,000 in cost just to do that one gym. So I've decided not to keep that in there. Um, same with that boiler room ceiling. I got a high number on that. So what we're planning on doing there is just putting up some hangers that I'll have an asbestos contractor install for us that we can work off from. Um, and that ceiling's been there for 40 years. I guess it's, like, it's gonna be there for another 20 probably. So we'll, we'll just work around it. There's really no need for us to get into it um, or penetrate it. And it's really low risk for anybody. It's not like friable or anything, so. Um, and then the DDC controls upgrade is the web-based control system that would essentially eliminate the pneumatics that you guys currently have in your school. So that's Rochester for a total price of 1,192,800. Projected uh, operational savings of 31,600. Um, Stockbridge Central School, we'd be looking at doing the classroom ERV. So that's um, eliminating your makeup air unit that you guys have up in the that mechanical space now, putting a new unit that would essentially just go pretty much like right outside this door, be right in the middle of that corridor. So we'd be taking down all those ceilings in there, putting the new rooftop mounted equipment, ducting into the hallway, and then we'll rebuild the ceilings in there. We got to clean up all the electrical up above the ceilings to bring it up to code. Um, and then we'll, we'll close it and same thing in here, all new light fixtures. So all these lights will come down and they'll be brand new fixtures throughout the whole school. And you also use the be lower. Is that what you mean by come down or you know, no, no, I just mean that they'll be they'll down. be pendant. So they call this like a pendant style where it it hangs from something. So it'll be similar, except for they're not nearly as wide. They're probably only they have a couple different styles. And I'll we'll go with a standard style throughout the whole school district so we don't have a bunch of different lenses to buy. Good. Um but yeah, they're they look better than this. They're much more cleaner than this. Will this ceiling remain in place? It will. Okay. No, the only ceilings that I'm adjusting uh, um, is in the corridor in order to get my new ductwork in. And then for the most part, the ducts inside of these spaces is getting new ductwork, but it's going to be cleaned up. It'll be cleaner. It'll look better than this. So. And these uh, projected savings are annually? Those are annual savings. And they're mixed. They're mostly energy savings. I do have some operational savings in there, maintenance savings um, that maybe more on the wood pellet and propane boiler backup. Um, but they're looking at uh, a little over 17 grand a year in fuel savings from that system. Um, LED lighting, like I said, is almost three grand a year in electrical. And then the controls upgrade is really fuel savings in that case as well. Um, and then the same thing goes for the Stockbridge Central School. Um, and then, so total cost at Stockbridge is 303000 So if you want to go to the next slide. Um, this kind of just goes over some of the locations of the outdoor stuff that we were just talking about. Um, you can see the propane tanks over here. Those are your two new propane tanks. Um, this underground line is probably going to come up around the school underground and then to a second stage regulator over here in order to us to reduce the gas pipe sizes. This is your silo, and this is your existing outdoor classroom. As you can see, it's pretty much taken up the whole space of the outdoor classroom. Um, and I'll go to the next slide. So this is your energy recovery unit. So this is your main entrance coming into the school. Um, so your energy recovery unit would be located right here on the roof. 
um, we're standing, I'm standing right here inside of this classroom. So this ductwork here would get replaced because it's kind of ugly. And then we would go with a nice spiral with a new diffuser in here. Um, and then this is all new ductwork leading out to the classroom. <coughs> Exhaust fans for the bathrooms um, and new heating coil that will be integrated into your existing boiler plant. Um, controls upgrade, same thing. All these rooms will now be on a web-based DDC control system. Same with the energy recovery unit. Um, the gymnasium, I'm going to leave out of the controls for now just because it's operational and uh, it is at the end of its life. So it should be probably looked at getting replaced in the near future. Um, there wasn't money in the ventilation project uh, grant to do that one. Um, but that one will stay off the existing dial thermostat and time clock that it currently operates. Next slide. The best part, total contract price of $1,495,800. Um, less the two grants that we're getting from the state of Vermont, including the wood heat grant and the IAQ grant, less the efficiency Vermont rebates at Rochester, which is um, for controls and for the, the biomass, um, less uh, the efficiency Vermont rebates here at Stockbridge of 2,500. So the total after grants and rebates is 1,008,300. Um, uh, based off what we've been Talking all along, ESSER contributions to this school would be 385,000, leaving a total district responsibility of 623,000. Um, in this case, which is something that I kind of wanted to discuss here, I have a, a lease right now from Municipal Leasing Services or Consultants of Grand Isle, Vermont. It's a little bit less than 5%, it's like 4.89 or something like that, just below 5%. Um, and then this number here was. I think just to, just below 42,000 with that change. Um, so you guys would be looking at um, annual lease payments of right around say 42,000 plus or minus a year. Um, total savings per year of 36,700. Um, and then we'd be looking, so with that 623 minus the 450,000 from the lease, um, you guys would still have to put in capital funds of 173,300 from capital reserves. And that's my presentation. I don't know if anybody has any questions, concerns of where we're at. And I've passed along a couple motions um, looking to get approved today um, so we can move forward with the project. Um, I had a question the about um, the, in it you were talking about the uh, removing the oil tanks and in it said that if there was any leaks that you are not responsible for, um, you know, that, that wasn't in the cost. And I just was wondering if we had a, a plan, a backup plan, or, um, you know, how... The, the state of Vermont has funds okay. for that kind of stuff. Of course, Yeah, the state of Vermont would cover that. Yes. For the most part. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, they have funds specific. They essentially, every project is done. Why is there such a large cost associated with removing it? State of Vermont fees, and there's fewer and fewer people looking to do it. Doing it, yeah. Doing it, yeah. It's just, yeah, there's a lot of third-party testing, so someone has to go and clean the tank, verify it, then they go down through the soils, they do soil samples of it, they leave it open for a couple of days, and they come through, backfill it, and patch it. Mm -hmm. And filling it wasn't an option? Uh, no, not based off the conversations that I had with the state. They want to see them removed. They want to see it removed. Unless there's some specific reason of why you would have to have it filled, but they want to do the soil testing around it and make mm -hmm. sure there's no contamination. All right, anybody have uh, any more questions or comments or discussion regarding um, this project? I got a lot of local, I think, teams on it. Merrill Mechanical would be looking at doing the mechanical at Rochester. Sunwood Biomass doing the split system. They're up in Waitsfield. I know they've been down a few times. Central mm -hmm. Vermont Electrical Service, looking at doing the electrical at the two buildings. So um, we're trying to build a lot of local teams and we have it in the same thing. I think the, the tank installs by Dead River and then the removal is, oh boy, it's either, not Masterson. Um, I'd have to get back to you. And somebody else, there's like three companies in the state and this was the one that was the low of the three, so. I forget the name of them. I think they're out of like the Heinsberg area or something. 
So it's pretty much an all full Vermont construction team, and for the most part, everybody's really, really local. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to ask uh, Robert and Patrick for their uh, take and summary, and do you recommend this project to the board? Yeah, no, I do. Um, everything so far seems seems good. Uh, yeah, no, we'll leave it there. Okay. Yeah. Robert? So just to clarify my thinking, uh, um, as I understand from these figures um, that for this these projects, the we'll have to have a capital outlay of 173 and, and change um, outlay plus um, an annual outlay of an increase in expenditures of 6,000. Is that right? Net. Yeah. Net. Yeah, yeah. That's a different right. Well, you know, if it worked for all these, these, um, Grants and such, I would say it was a poor return on investment. But I, in this case, I'd say it's an excellent deal. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what are what do we have available for capital funds? Um, and this we would need um, immediately, essentially, like in this next budget. No, I mean we would. If you you'd approve this, and then we would come to the board to request access to the capital funds. Do we have 73. Tara, do you remember where they're at currently right now prior to us putting some more money in this year? We have individual. You have um, upon my last review, there is a hundred and nine thousand five hundred twenty seven dollars and ninety five cents. And this was last February when I sent you all that memo in the Stockbridge construction fund. You had 70904 available in the Rochester fund that you created last year, um, which was from the Dandelion daycare sale. And then you used 45426000 So that leaves a balance of $25,478. And then you created the new RSUD constr capital construction project fund, not the correct name, sorry. And you put sixty three thousand six fifty in it la at your um, annual meeting last year. Thank you, thank you, Tara. You're welcome. Okay, um, is there any further discussion or comments on this? Otherwise, I do have a motion in front of me to approve this. Feel it seems to be the will of the board. All right, uh, the first motion is. Uh, shall the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District authorize the superintendent to enter into a performance contract with Energy Efficient Investments INC for a contract amount not to exceed 1.5 million? I'll take a second. Motion has been made. I second. Seconded by Bill. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Second motion, shall the Stockbridge, the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District authorize the superintendent to enter into a lease agreement with municipal leasing consultants out of Grand Isle, Vermont for an amount up to $450,000 at a rate no higher than 5% for up to 15 years this lease will contain an escape clause. Motion is made, I'll have a second. Second. Bill seconds. Any further discussion? No. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Wonderful, both Thank motions you. passed. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I'm very excited. I have yeah. one, one quick question. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, regarding scheduling, so, is it guaranteed that everything will be completed before school starts fall of 23? Uh, no, not guaranteed. 
Okay. Uh, essentially, the goal will be um, I will be out of I'll definitely be out of all the classrooms by then. The only thing that sometimes these like pellet boilers take a little like the silos, getting them take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. So our goal is um, to have the propane system up and running by school start. So have that boiler up and running first, which is your primary, and then to have essentially that pellet boiler up and running by mid-October, with the idea that that's going to be firing probably end of November is when you yep. usually start firing those units. So um, this, as long as, you know, boilers I'm not worried about. Um, for some reason, like these pellet silos have been tougher to get lately. Um, but no, I mean, overall, the lead items in this project are not mm -hmm. a huge concern. So we should be in good shape. Great. More Thank so you. here than some of the other schools, so. I have a quick question too. Yeah. Um, and did you say that the um, area was going to, the outdoor area was going to take up the uh, Stockbridge outdoor classroom? No, Rochester outdoor classroom. Rochester outdoor classroom. Is there, did we talked about relocating that last time, right? Okay, yes. I thought, I thought he was. It'll get relocated about, rather than. Okay. I thought he was talking about Stockbridge this time. So, okay. We, we've already got Rochester on our minds. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you awesome. very much. So much. Well, thank you. Great. All right. We'll move on to thank reports from the board. We'll be in touch. Um, superintendent, superintendent's report. Uh, so you have my report in hand. I just wanted to mention you're getting the, the winter 2022 academic data report. We probably should actually say 23. Um, and so the one thing I wanted to highlight, I um, have been meeting with the Rochester High School Repurposing Committee on a regular basis, um, and I captured uh, some bullet points of why the Bella program would be important to pursue in regards to that endeavor. That's also on the agenda tonight. And I thought Catherine Shakeman is going to join um, a little bit later, too, during that report as well. Um, and so... We, uh, I'll get into more of that when it's on, that's up for discussion. There's just a, some key dates approaching um, that are important in regards to that work. Otherwise, um, our next community um, conversation is this Wednesday with Sharon. Um, and we've been having um, positive attendance. Um, in general, I've been pleased with the um, show of, of community support around these conversations uh, thus far and the march one will be held um here in stockbridge what time do they kick off on wednesday wednesday at 5 30. always at 5 30 always the first wednesday of the month but the march one will be here and it's focused on mathematics great this is the second could be, I don't know. Yeah, because it, just because the first fell on. Yeah, Wednesday. I think the second one Yeah, that makes sense. Great. Um, does anybody have any questions for the superintendent about his report? Just umbrella. Is that a, 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 a shorthand for umbrella? Or? <laughs> Do you know what umbrella stands for? It's no, a, I, don't, I don't have a clue. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Catherine might be able to tell us. It's just a, it's a state yeah. program yes, yes. that encourages I've heard kids that. and towns to do the right thing with with rules, regulations, and money. Uh, what is okay. it, Parker? Uh, per Google, Brownfields Reuse and Environmental Liability Limina Limitation. Oh my gosh, program. I don't know where Brownfield was in it, but I didn't know. <laughs> we'll go Where's the A come from? Okay, great. And we'll be discussing that part uh, a little bit later than in our agenda. Okay, well, if there's no questions for the superintendent, then we'll move on to the principal's report. Yes, so we have two reports this month, but normal principal's report. Um, to start with, I think the highlight that I didn't include here is we have two students from Stockbridge who, in the four, five, six classroom, there's something oh, called Row, Row Bank, uh, which is named after Miss Row, the teacher, where kids can cash in their hands. Remember, I already talked yeah. about those for recognition last month, and they chose to cash theirs in to be superintendent for them. Right. So last Friday, um, they got to participate with Jamie. We uh, they got to have pizza. 
which was exciting because they weren't pumped about lunch. <laughs> that came up. But then they sat in on an interview with him in Bethel. They toured the Bethel campus with him and did classroom walkthroughs and then came back and had another meeting with them. So oh, and yeah. now it's become in high demand as another student just cashed in. <laughs> oh, that's great. It is great. They're very fascinating. Apparently the principal doesn't make enough important decisions in their eyes, which is okay. It's great that they want to go do that. Um, so they're pretty excited about that. And it started to get out at Rochester that this was happening. So I have a couple of requests waiting for me on how do Rochester students get to do that as well. So it's pretty exciting that they're um, excited about that. And then the other thing I'll add is our preschool screenings for next year for new families are coming up. So I believe Stockbridge is the 17th of March and then Rochester is the 14th of April. And so we'll start to get those numbers going and have a better idea what preschool will look like next year. Great. Do you have any questions about this report? And you can go to the academic one. Uh, is there any questions specific to the principal's report in hand? Thank you. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go to the next report, it's actually, like Jamie said, our universal academic benchmark from winter 2023. So um, students took the second round, K through six, of um, Track My Progress as a universal screener um, to just notice our progress and where we're at. So we want to go section by section. The first section you see on page one. Um, actually shows our rate of progress compared to the national average since this fall. So um, if you look at the numbers on the far right, that 1.0 means we're keeping pace. That grade level is keeping pace with the um, rate of progress for the national average. A 2.0 means we're doubling the rate and 0.5 indicates half the rate. So as you can see- We're doing excellent. We are wow. making huh. great Strong. progress. And I think it just really speaks to the fact that we have a lot of unity going on in the yeah. curriculum we're utilizing. Uh, we're not putting parts and pieces together anymore. So it's great investment and we're really, it's exciting. Yeah. Lindy, question? Yeah. Um, you said the national average. Is that the national average that uh, the information goes through those school systems that use track my progress so we're kind of measuring um apples and apples uh, what's the definition of natural of national average oh that's a good question that is yeah that is that is set by track my progress so that's the study they have done of yeah. it it's a little bit why just to why even though we're making this great progress, we'll still see that we're not, right? Not every single kid is proficient that you'd think no. that when you first look at those numbers because mm -hmm. we also still are setting our benchmarks yes. for Vermont and the region, which is higher than the national average. So it's a little bit why I think there's a disconnect, which we're still making great, we're making great progress. I think this is good to celebrate and why when we look within the whole region, we still have some areas to work on. Yeah, and is uh, Track My Progress, their database, is it pretty reflective of the country as a whole or is it, more rural than urban, more uh, uh, affluent suburbs. And do you have any sense of whether, uh, how? Yeah, I, I get this. At all. The sense of when they set they when they set benchmarks and rates of progress, they are pulling from as representative a sample as possible from within their entire mm -hmm. their entire group. I don't I don't think I know exactly their. No, I wasn't exact, but that yeah. you would hope that they would be doing yeah. that. Yes. So then, if we go to page two. Um, you will see a comparison. The top chart is from our winner uh, score. So this is the percentage of students at each grade level that um, are meeting proficiency or exceeding proficiency um, compared to the fall. So again, a lot of great celebrations. We're starting to see some of those reds and yellows, which is well below and below mm -hmm. meeting expectations, um, start to shrink. Uh, with the exception, I believe, of grade, oh, no, sorry, I'm looking at it in reverse. Never mind. <laughs> I was like, wait, no, something's not growing. Sorry. Uh, so you will see that our, we're starting to see an increase in the percentage of students meeting or exceeding the expectations. And I mentioned this in my notes, but the really exciting thing is to look at our kindergarten and to see. Um, this is the first time they've taken it, so you're not going to see them in that comparison 
to the fall, but that all of our kindergartners in both buildings are meeting or exceeding the expectations right now. That's great. So we, that just lays the foundation that we're seeing some great progress. Like our preschool teachers should be celebrated because they were using some of the bridges components as well. And it's starting to carry into kindergarten. So it's pretty exciting. That's great. Yeah. That's really exciting. It is. So, um, then we'll move to page three. And again, um, what you see here is our average scaled score and the, um, Pretty much every grade level, with the exception of fourth and sixth grade, we are exceeding like the expectation for average scaled score. But we're closing the gap, even on we the are closing the gap. Like it's dropped Big tremendously. Time. It's exciting to see. Um, and this has also been data that we've used as we've started to um, implement just direct instruction programming for our phonics as an example of what happens when we all commit to one curriculum and providing it with fidelity. Nice. Um, it's a great way to show that that makes a huge difference. Question. Um, Anna, do you and Lindy uh, set the expectations? How are those established? So we set those again in conversation with Track My Progress, understanding where other districts in Vermont had set them, um, and where yeah, again where what we would expect to be the regional. So it, it is at sixty percent is is meeting expectations. Um, I think there are places where that expectation is set at forty percent, uh, and where it's set at fifty percent. So we are on the high end of sort of the. Uh, you say the options there they are where we had them set last year for the same for the districts that use track my progress so that part is consistent uh we have had questions from teachers at why why we have it set, set at 60 and um in the in the dialogue that we had when we were setting this up last year it was um the indication that we got that it was most also aligned with at the time our state summative for the ss back and i think we saw that for the most part for the results we got last spring there was Track my progress for the grades that get tested and track my progress and smarter balance. There wasn't a big difference between the two. It wasn't like one was a lot higher than the other. So as much it's not the only. I mean, I think this is a lot more actionable for instruction than SBAC, but we also want it to be predictive, so we're not surprised when the state summit comes and our kids are in one direction or the other. We want this to be somewhat pr predictive, and we found that to be true. Um, so hopefully, again, we have a new state summative. We don't know exactly how that this will map onto it. So we are keeping this as our, you know, our baseline so that we're not switching the, the end goal for our folks. I like that. And it's also an SU expectation. These aren't yes, set by- Yes, uh, yeah, right. Right. I can't change. I'm the only one who can change it. It's like, I have no clue. I'm like, <laughs> <That's laughs> talking about myself. Supposed to. Is that the reason you were taking it, giving her a free thing at the Ritz? Is that the- Oh, uh, well, yeah. look, I- <laughs> Thank it's you. It's a new tool. So um, one thing, as we talk about like proficiency based report cards and those assessments, you know, that are being provided home, this also um, explains and breaks down for folks what grade level you're seeing some of these domains. So when I say we focus on a different strand, like number operations in base 10, um, Bonnie Bourne would tell us that if students aren't strong in that, they can't have the building blocks to progress forward which is why you see it, something assessed K through fifth grade. Um, so these are just, you know, fractions is pretty heavy on the third, fourth, and fifth grade assessment. Um, so just kind of to give you a, an idea of what sort of standards are being, um, or types of questions might be there, and there's even some examples uh, for you um, in a, on page five. But on page four, it really shows you um, how again we are progressing as a um, as a school district in those different standards. So we're seeing lots of growth. Um, you'll notice counting and cardinality is not there. That's typically a kindergarten um, skill set, which is why you only see it in the winter. You don't see it in the fall. But um, you'll notice that our number and operations in base ten, um, we're starting to see an a great increase in the number of students who are mastering that or meeting the standard in that, um, which is an area we want to go. But overall, you know, the red and yellow is getting smaller, which is the big goal, and the blue and the green is getting larger. So we're seeing great um, increases in those areas, which is great. Um, and then page five, those are some sample questions. 
if you care to uh if you care to uh challenge yourself <laughs> <laughs> it is an advantage of this assessment too that we can see these questions right um and we even include an example where a student got it wrong just so you can see so that that first question uh, the student who's, whose assessment we took it off of had gotten this one wrong. It gives you the options. And what we can do on the platform is just it should, um, toggle between show student answer and show correct answer. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's the same. And you can also see how long the student spent on it, those sorts of things. But just to see how easy it is to sort of see what it is the question is, what the standard is, which is always written right next to the question, mm -hmm. um, and then what they did, how long they took on it. So. And wow. these are points that we're using in our data teams and our MTSS to look at uh, at multi-tiered systems of support uh, team to look at to focus in on what strands we need to progress monitor and make sure that we're making more gains between now and the spring. And so some of those areas are going to be fractions, expressions, and equations, and ratios and probabilities. So really, um, what a great tool. Yeah, yeah, much more. Uh, detail like it, teachers seem to enjoy it because it they feel like it gives them an ability to conference with students on like explain your thought process what's going on um especially with the literacy one but yeah you know, we're seeing a great correlation wow well don's not even getting minimum wage <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Are you going to five dollars for every hour she works? Oh, Come so, on! You can't speak so, to that piece of the paper. The other thing you can do is you can give feedback on questions. Like if you saw this question, there's actually a little thing that says and it sends an email right to the organization. Right. We had one last year that I thought was not uh, culturally responsive. And I think, yeah. uh, and they were immediately responsive to thanks for that feedback. So we could say that yeah, this is not right. really promoting that our students yeah. will have sort of a high expectation. Yeah. Right. Five dollars. Get in there. <laughs> no doesn't help with those babysitting services want to start out. <laughs> or maybe it does on your end as a parent um so that's kind of a summary of math any questions about math before we go to english language arts all right in that case we'll go to page six here um so again the first uh chart on page six is six is the percentage of students at each grade level within the proficiency um, band so they're meeting the expectation or exceeding and again our kindergarten students all students both grades they're just rocking it it's awesome to, it's very exciting to it do. is right we're getting them on a good level to start with they'll be right. very um it, it'll be gr really great to watch this grade progress and exactly see and challenge yeah and challenges and, yeah. and see how you know like you said the system of of unity and, right. and cohesiveness um um and then also if you look at that sixth grade cohort only 15 percent of them were meeting that expectation in the fall and now 53 percent of them so it, there's a lot of gaps that are um being closed and we're making some great progress and even it, it's each grade level Right. Um, we haven't been focusing on our phonics uh, instruction for very long, but it is starting to make some differences. Um, and we'll continue to monitor that through different tools because this doesn't necessarily give us um, an in-depth look at phonics understanding. We use something called the Dibbles assessment, which tells us how students can decode words and things like this. This really focuses on comprehension skills. Um, Fluency, nouns, verbs, the whole thing. Um, if you go to page seven, you'll see that rate of progress again. So we want at least a one, one point oh rate of progress, because um, that means we're staying on track with the national average. Or two point oh and above means we're doubling, and then point five means it's at half the rate. So again, we're progressing at double the rate. Um, in all our grade levels currently, um, making progress that way. And then under our average skills score, we're still in the yellow, but we've um, our our skills scores are increasing, and that that difference, like you mentioned in math, Phil, from fall to winter, starting to close those skills score numbers down. Tremendous. And then back to the different standards uh, in literacy that you see those reading foundational skills, which was a point of emphasis after our fall assessment. You will see that we've um, 
shown an increase of 23% who are meeting the expectation and then 10% who are exceeding it and 25% who are almost meeting it and then 40% well below. So those percentages are starting to drop. I like to see them drop a little quicker, but we're putting in the work mm -hmm. to get there. Um, and again, then on the bottom are some examples and on to the next page, page eight, are some examples of some of the questions. Here you can see, hopefully there's no $5 an hour, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> that is a little, I didn't do that. So. You're looking at it as a math equation. Right, not, <laughs> uh, right. And right. yes, five is a good thing for kids to. Don's getting gypped. <laughs> <laughs> right. Question? Uh, yeah. Uh, on the English language arts, uh, these two, the data here is, this past fall and um, winter. Um, and that's prior to our direct instruction initiative. Huge, huge initiative. So we're not gonna be able to see those results that are gonna build on these until April, the April um, tests. And I, I, that's only three months. So I'm, I'm not expecting you to be walking on water, but um, w what should our expectations kind of going forward for this first three months kind of look like I assume would the, the progress would continue and maybe have an upswing what what are your what are your hopes at this point um I think an upswing I think to see what we saw in math will take us yet another fall or winter test cycle to see for them to, to totally yeah of a change because then it'll be something that's been us out I mean teachers have really only been implementing this for about a month with coaching um so just like with the math material, like the math curriculum, it takes a little bit of time for everybody to have it in place with fidelity. And that being said, I wouldn't even say we're still at the point of math fully implemented yeah. with fidelity. Like we're only on year two. So we're still, yeah. we're making progress in the right direction. Um, well, and the longer it's tremendously stick, exciting. It is. It's very exciting. And you know, there are other questions. Are there any questions for uh, um, Lindy? Yeah, I guess, that? you know, this is looking at it nationally, but if we're looking at the state standards, does it, I guess, is, the, is that gap a lot closer? Is it still, are we still exceeding even at state? So I think the, the best view of that, given that we don't, we don't really know the state um, yeah. comparison until the end, right, until we do that state summative, I think the best comparison we have right now is looking at that scale score. So where we saw that, you know, all those long green bars and progress in both math and, and ELA, especially in ELA, when we look at that scale score, except for kindergarten, like all of our scale scores are still below expectations. They're getting a lot closer to that expectation, but I think that's, that's where you can sort of see where we're, and more on par with the rest of the state, we're not we're not okay. blowing past it. Um, and I think um, I think a lot of folks are in the same situation. When I talk to the you know folks in my role across the districts, I mean every a lot everyone is looking at literacy. Everyone is trying to figure out how do we sort of. I think of it as just like this really big like ocean liners, you know, to try to move it um, in a place like this that's very responsive, right? Again, um, to, to, to both to professional development instruction, like I think it, I think it will shift quicker because um, you've just, yeah, it's, it just feels like as soon as you walk into the classroom, like the teachers are trying something new and they're like full on into it. So I, I you know, I think that a lot of high expectations here, that kindergarten data almost makes me nervous, right? Because now we've set the bar really hard, high for ourselves. I think it, I, it's the good kind of nervous. It's like the kind of, it's the place you want to be, but well, we can't let those kiddos down, right? Like we need to continue to keep that, you know, that growth really moving for them also. So I think they, they are going to push us um, to make sure that this, this, they, they are sort of the, the tide that um, continues to move this, um, kind of this level of, of learning through all of our grades. Great. That's wonderful. Thank you. Great news. Uh, is there any further questions uh, about the uh, principal's report or the social emotional data? Academic. I, sorry. That's it's wrong on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was like, as I was reading, I was like, that's not what we just went through. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off. No, thank you. I appreciate this academic data. Yeah. Don't want to cause confusion. Yeah. <laughs> They're connected. Okay. Great. Well, then we can move on to um, the business manager's report. Um, and it's Tara. Oh, she is. Wonderful. Take it away, Tara. 
You have my report, which outlines the due dates for the business office during the month of February. So if there's any questions there, I will happily try to answer them. Otherwise, uh, the rest of my report is your budget discussion later. Okay, is there any questions for Tara in regards to her um, report? All right. Um, 8.4. Uh, nice yes, thank you. Uh, full board updates. Is that me? <laughs> you and Bill. I would say. Well, one, go ahead, Bill. <laughs> I didn't have anything prepared. Well, I think the, the big thing was that um, at our last meeting, uh, the policy committee uh, presented um, uh, their uh, the flag policy for adoption by um, the SU board. You know, thanks to go to Patrick and the full policy committee for working on this since last summer and going through, I don't know, five or six drafts and versions uh, to try to come up with a policy that was viable. Um, just to remind everybody the reason we have a flag policy and need a flag policy, no matter what it is, is that there's a case in the city of Boston and a, and a building I used to work in where the city made a decision on what should be flown on an exterior flagpole and it was appealed all the way to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court turned down the city of Boston. One of the huge reasons why, because the city didn't have a policy. And so they were kind of winging it. And uh, so this is the first time somebody said, hey, wait a second, that's not fair. So we're going to, we need a policy. And what's unique here is, for, for my research, is that it's not one policy necessarily, it's a policy that allows each district to establish its own policy. So we have uh, a district with a high school and we have our district with elementary schools. So they can be different within the fine, guidelines. And then they give um, the the process that we need to go through and, and to evaluate and to make that decision. So um, as you know, I've had some feelings of, about so, it. I'm just going to stop I'm you sorry. right there just because stop. we're on full board update and we are going to then move on to the policy yes, next. Do I you jump. have any other Thank full you. board updates yes. before we move oh, on to the flag God. policy? <laughs> that was... uh, so that's the big thing I wanted to report on. Um, I guess the other thing is that we're continuing to negotiate uh, with the special educators and uh, um, I think there's a, a, a good sense of respect and understanding um, on both sides that we work together and we're part of the same team. So I'm, I'm heartened by that. So. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you want that. to report about the full board meeting? So you have your strategic plans in hard copy um, for the board members tonight. Patrick, you should have one there too. Those are also being uh, distributed all the town clerks throughout the SU and other public um, community locations to try to get them in folks' hands. Great. Thank you. Yeah, nice going. The only other thing I would add is that the full board is working in a committee around uh, a new mentor-mentee program, mentor program for uh, newly um, new board members to the SU. Um, and I think they're hoping to have a final draft for the full board to review in February at the full board meeting so that we can start to implement that in March. Um, when many of our towns will be uh, voting on new board members and reorganizing. Great, I think that'll be helpful. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I like it because it's not only for new board members, but it's for all board members. And, uh, right. It's help. It's all to kind of keep organized. Great. Okay, uh, so if that's it for the full board updates, we will now move on to the flag <laughs> policy, which I'm sorry that is fine because it was indeed um, part of the full board uh, meeting. Um, so we have the flag policy in front of us. Um, for any discussion regarding it. Um, I will say that um, my opinion is, is that I do not feel that the flagpole is a venue uh, to fight for any group or individual beliefs. Um, I've been, and I feel that um, 
I've been paying close attention to flagpoles since this policy has been brought forth. And anytime I drive by an American flagpole on the top with another flag below, I feel like it instantly tells me what that entire institution believes in and supports. Um, it really makes a, a, I feel it makes like a bold statement for like all that are involved in the organization when I see it. Um, I also feel it is important for, to support our students' freedom of expression and voice, but I don't feel that the American flagpole is the right venue for that. I, um, so, you know, I've spent far too much time trying to figure this thing out. So I uh, apologize for that. And I, um, I agree with that sentiment. I do believe that the policy we're being asked to vote on tonight allows each district board, including ours, to set our own individual policy. And that policy um, can be exactly reflect your sentiments or not. We're going to have to discuss it and at, at a further meeting and all that sort of stuff. So that's the power of this current policy that we can do that. Um, and um, to that extent, um, uh, I'd like to move. Yeah, I think at, being a part of the policy committee, I think that was why we went the direction we went because we could we couldn't necessarily agree on that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this gives each district their own opportunity, yeah. opportunity to, to make that decision themselves. Okay. Right. Yeah. I mean, so I wrong, but uh, it's okay. Yeah. I, I'll move the A32 flag policy, White River Valley Supervisory Union flag policy, as written. As written. Hmm? As written, you said. Yeah, as as we've received it in the. Um, you move that we said. Yeah. I'll second. All right. Uh, Pat. Second sip. Uh, discussion. I have a quick question. I, do we have a certain time frame we need to come up with our own policy within? No, I mean, what we'll do is you'll just need, by policy, you're going to need to designate where banners or flags could be posted. So that will be a future agenda item. Okay. So, so it won't be until all the districts approve it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll make it an actionable item here in the next month or two. Okay, so we're not figuring that out tonight. We don't have okay. any group that I know of coming forward in the next month um, with a request. Um, maybe you can help me out because I was going to make a motion to change to make an uh, amendment to this policy that the Rochester um uh they're uh, reading uh therefore this policy of the or valley su that each district will in the supervisory and shall adopt its own flag policy consistent with the procedures here within the amendment would be that rsud will only fly the american the united states and the state of vermont flag on our flagpoles and will designate a space within the building to hang flags that comply with the requirements herein so that would be that, something that, that we agree on. So that's an amendment that I was going to make, and I'm just confused as to. This is an SU policy. Okay. This is not an RSUD policy. Okay. You would adopt or so not adopt the SU policy. This gives you the opportunity to do that at an upcoming meeting. Mm -hmm. When we when we talk about what our policy will be, that okay, that will be relevant. Okay. All right, so there is a, um, yes, we're in discussion. Um, on the, um, they designate a space within the building. Um, does the within the building encompass the outside of the building? Yes, we had yeah. discussed that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a motion, a second on the floor. Uh, is there any further discussion? I think if, it, if within the building consists of outside the building, I think that's a little confusing. 
Because that was the thing I was hung up on before. That, yeah, I don't know. I, right. I, I agree because I'm um, reading this. It says within the building. Right. right. Um, so that's something I I don't love about the policy, but I guess we can just decide on whatever we want after we adopt this. Because I like every, you know most of it. I just some of things some things like that. I was confused about. So that's curious to me. <laughs> So by us accepting this, though, we ha still have the option to adapt you get to our designate own, a location, adapt our own. By interpreting that meaning within and without the building. Well, by flying on the flagpole, I would imply that it means without outside the building as well. OK. But the we have the freedom through this policy when it gets to what we're going to do on our side. That we can define where that it will, yeah, uh, okay. the five poles are one thing, and, and inside the school, is something and nothing in the outside or inside and outside. We have can have that discussion mm -hmm. and uh, and decide and um, create our own policy, our own policy. Okay. Yep, okay. All right, uh, is there any further discussion? No, no. all right. Um, no. all in favor, aye, aye. 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 All opposed? Great, motion passed. Okay, um, are we moving on to celebration of learning or do we have oh, somebody here to yeah, present? Matt, Matt Cooper is here to uh, answer any questions is, and have a discussion around the potential solar donation. If that's all right with the rest of you, I'd like to go ahead and push them up on the agenda. To now. <laughs> All right. yeah. Great, thank you. Did everybody have a chance to take a look? Take a peek. Some quick notes there. Thank you for having me, everybody. Um, it's been a pleasure. Hopefully, you've all gotten to take a look at this. Um, so, Deborah Aldrich was kind enough to donate some materials for a solar project that she had currently replaced. Um, it's a system that's used but still fully functional. So she's decided to donate the equipment. I've decided to donate my time installing it. Um, the cost still does come out to $6,154 as an investment. Um, expected return on that investment would be six years, um, producing a little over $1,000 in electricity annually. Um, that's given that the current rate that the school is paying is 17 cents per watt. Um, that's the gist of it um, from a financial standpoint. Um, there's a little bit more to it than that, and that there's um, there's still engineering that's still going to be needed to be done on this, and permitting, and other costs associated with the project as well. So we have a six-year return on investment, and the system should have an, a life expectancy of about fifteen years remaining on it. Fifteen, so correct? Yeah. yeah. What about the inverter? I see it's a four year life expectancy. Is that? That's correct. So it is used. It should have about that left. Now, let's give or take. Um, there are warranties that are transferable from the original owner. Um, so that's, I believe, it's 12 years on the inverter. And we have uh, 25 total on the panels and optimizers themselves, which they now have 17 years, I think it's left on them. And a little backstory. So Hudson and Sons, we we did the the solar replacement of her system about a year ago, um, and the reason wasn't because the system was wasn't functioning properly or anything like that. The reason was is that she had the backside of her barn with just a certain amount of a square foot of space that she could fit her solar panels on, and she bought an electric car. So with that, she she needed to provide more power for for that stanchion for that um, system, and so we ended up going with a higher output panel on that roof. So essentially, she just updated her entire system, and then she, she with that she really wanted us to try and focus on on donating this to the school that was something she she was adamant about and we told her that we would like, thankfully matt is willing to give his time and if there's anything i need to do i'm willing to give my time 
Um, and so, you know, we wanted to try and kind of make that come to fruition for, for Deborah. Um, and I think, you know, she does an awful lot for the town too. So oh, well, she sure does. So yeah. really, she's donating the, she's donating the panels, the inverter every, so and, everything. The, and yeah. the labor to, I'd be donating. He would be oh, donating. donating labor. Labor yeah. So what are the addition, what's the wow. guess, guesstimate on the additional costs? So you'll yeah. know more, more about that. Yeah. yeah. So we're looking at first and foremost, there's green mountain power, green mountain power costs associated with this, which is going to be interconnection fees. Um, that's most of it. It's usually between two hundred and fifty, four hundred dollars for that. Um, we're looking at getting an engineer to come in. They're going to have to look at the structure itself, and make sure that the building can hold the additional weight. Um, so that's going to be. And I, who was it? We, who was it? You that we, we had that conversation, or somebody had already <clears throat> looked at that. The structure should be fine. Like we Black River. Black River. I, I believe it was in the Black River design report. I can so share that. So if you that have that, you. then that, that yep. would say that would be very. Yeah. Helpful. I can yes. I'll send it to you, and you tell me if it has. Great. What you okay. Think. How about that? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. there's that. Um, I believe that's. that's Conduit, right? We do have to get a master electrician on board as well to do the interconnection of the AC at the meter itself. Um, Got to get a permit. That's going to be a small fee as well uh, to get the inspection done. But other than that, this should be covered. Mm -hmm. And I do have. So that price could potentially drop depending on what's that. Because you, you have an allowance in, in that six thousand one fifty four for the engineer, or no? I do not. You don't. That's okay. an additional. Cost. Okay, that's the additional cost. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I haven't reached out to one yet. I wanted to meet with you guys before I really put it. So in that I mean that cost also includes conduit, right? The, yeah. So yeah. that's all the materials, labor to get it installed. Yeah. The only things not included would be so those. such as like running wire, you know, things like of that nature that we don't have with this donated system. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Okay. So we're ballparking in, let's say, under $8,000? I would say yeah. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we have, with that, that would be a return on, it, it would pay for itself in eight years, basically. Right. Rough under eight yes. years. That would be correct. Yep. And potentially could be there for 15 to 20 years, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you were here doing a site visit, you yep. also did yes. a little observation. That of the is going existing. to be a little more of a project. Um, that one's interesting. It does appear to be working. Um, does everybody want to give a little... Yeah. Does yeah. anybody know where the credits for that are going? Yeah. Okay. It appears to be on a separate the, service. Um, it is feeding so, in yeah. no, the, somewhere. Um, Solar it's feeding on summer. There's an existing solar, yeah, yeah. solar. Not system. working. Well, oh, it, so is it is working. working. We just Somebody's getting the credits. Um, where they're going, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but they are feeding into a panel in the small shed out there by the fields, um, and it appears to be on a separate service. So that's something I probably can't look into. And that, and when you say the, sorry, the concession stand? There's a separate okay. meter. Yes. Which is a separate meter in itself. Yes. So. so where that okay. exactly goes, I don't know. That's something you guys are probably going to have to I'm look into. Yeah. As I don't think they're going to allow me to look into the building. And was there anything, I mean, what was it that you came up with around that, that uh, some of the issues? There's, yeah, there's a good amount. Uh, it's not the most efficient system back there. It's heavily shaded. Uh, there's a few options. I mean, you can cut trees to bump production up as well as, you know, you can drag it out into the field a little bit. It is also a heavily overbuilt system. <laughs> um, it's got battery backup that's not being utilized. It's a rather hefty unit for what it's doing. Um, so whether or not we still want to utilize that or if you want to look at, might be more beneficial to see if that could be sold, if I'm being honest. Um, because we're not really using that system to its capacity. As to what what about doing. now, if you, if I'm just thinking out loud, if you're saying that there's a battery system on board, yep. we are 
discussing now at Stockbridge Central School being at the town's emergency. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We are, yeah. Yeah. Shelter. yeah. Would that potentially have any value? It depends on what kind of equipment you're looking to run. That would be well, what would you be looking to run? I mean, we, we got really a have generator. generator. Yeah, yeah, I know we have a generator, <laughs> but I'm just thinking out, outside of that, is there any value to having those batteries? You know, I, I guess that's just something to, to think about. But Robert, is this system by any chance? I mean, uh, installed around after Irene. Um, there was a system that was installed in Rochester. It's by the um, town offices, and its purpose was to basically provide um, um, uh, cell phone service because we we were without without. And I'm just wondering, is is it possible that this has? What do you mean cell phone service? You mean just power to come plug your cell phone in to charge it, or no, no, to, to provide battery on the cell tower so you, could, you could power you, the tower power the tower it, it basically had um facility for linking you to the interesting okay so and and i it was it wasn't a well thought out <laughs> system uh and i'm not even sure if it's it's functional over in rochester but mm -hmm. it's possible that that's associated with um you know basically providing uh, communications when there's we're we're in an emergency state, and this the that equipment may belong to the state. So I mean, you might go into the cabinet, see who there. There must be some information about who installed it or whatever. Call them up and find out what they what this what they know about it. Oh, question now if that is on a separate meter yep. for that building potentially if those batteries were operating would it only be powering that building that's correct now is that i mean now that that building's being used for community meals if we have a long outage those meals are no longer any good so With the having, way i see it wired in there now i don't see it backing up any of that building it looks to be like that's feeding the grid and that's it. To be giving backup power, you'd have two circuits coming over and I only see one. Mm -hmm. So there's the grid feed and then there'd be a battery feed. And yeah. At the moment, so it's it was like feeding. those batteries, what, what's the purpose of them? It appears to me to, there's not one at the moment. To collect power and then give it back to the grid at peak times or? You would have to dig into that cabinet to really know okay. for sure if they're being utilized at all. Mm -hmm. It's, From what I can tell, they're not. Who knows how long it's been there? So it's old yeah. technology. But for your old suggestion region. would be sell it would probably be the best uh, option if we have the. Ability you might to. make the most money out of it um, that way. It's pretty sophisticated system back there um, that's not really getting utilized. Whether or not cutting the trees or moving that system forward at all, how much electricity you're going to generate. You're probably going to make more in the long run by selling the unit. I would say. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. But we have to determine who it belongs to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Okay. Great. Are the cabinets Great accessible? Who has the keys? Yeah. <laughs> it is locked out there. Um, yeah, we can get into it. We can take a look in there. Um, there's some information. I have a couple pictures from inside it as well. Um, I forget, Northern Reliability was the one sticker I did see as far as a company who may have installed it. That's a little. Are they still in operation or not? I did try to look them up and it appears to be operational, though I can't quite figure out their function within the state now. They're not quite an installer, but okay. they have some sort of connection to the solar community. So it sounds like a little mystery to, mm. to track down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. I just, um, yep. Deborah Aldridge is an amazing person. Um, and 
This is another example of her deep feeling for serving and, and helping and supporting uh, the town of Stockbridge, which she, she loves. And she's also the instigator instigator. She is the originator and the leader of the Stockbridge Free Community Meals to Go, which is, as far as I know, one of the first rural free community meal programs of its kind. Um, Certainly in the Northeast, maybe in the country, there's a lot of uh, models in this uh, serving the cities and in urban areas, but not so much in in uh, here. So, and statistics saying that 20% of the people in Vermont have uh, food insecurity. Uh, so it's huge. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm blundering out here, but um, when would be a good time to send her a very nice thank you? Is it now, or should we wait, Patrick, and tell it's all installed, or what do, you, what do you? Well, I think I think if we want to vote on it, I think she would be extremely pleased to hear that that we're move, that we're ready to move forward with it. That would excite her. We warned this only as discussion. I didn't yeah. want it for yeah. action, okay? Because um, you hadn't discussed it initially, mm -hmm. but it certainly could be warned for action next month. Okay, gotcha. and maybe we could dial in on the. We could do some research on the architect cost just so we have a yeah, um, whether, yeah. whether we have if we already have that yeah. handled or not. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what it was. I had a conversation with Cricket. And, and she, she didn't know. Yeah. She and I think she was like, Yeah, you're totally fine. And, and if she we need know. her to stop in, she would she would, I think, donate her services for that too. Yeah. I'll send you that report, but yep. she would know because she was yeah them. yeah that's what she said so yeah great all right does anybody have any further questions in regards to this uh <clears throat> project sounds we'll exciting the agenda for action yeah yeah okay great great thanks matt yeah appreciate it excellent all right well now we'll move on to celebration of learning the uh kindergarten Math number corner. Yes. So it took her a little bit. I shared that with you. You can stay, Matt. You don't have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one component in addition to a math block is number corner. And it's something that happens K through six. And this is an example of a street kindergarten number corner. It includes calendar, calendar collector, number sentences, a lot of different components where students really work on their number sense skills. Um, and so it's just a great example. So you have an idea of what's going on in other ways that we build um, number sense in our classrooms. It's probably a little different than when all of us went to school. But if you want to go. Yeah. The audio is very poor right now. Yes, unfortunately. the audio or no because right now no. right now they're they're not talking well, right now they are talking yeah. but hey. yeah there's no way for me to increase the audio that's to do with the actual recording was it louder on your computer i thought that, i mean it was when i listened to it in my office but can you turn it up on the TV itself. Well, the TV is not playing the sound. The owl is. Oh, and that's. I gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Well, who's asked? I heard a lot of different ideas, but just 
share out, let's say, three of them. Max, can you give us your idea? Um, me and Harrison talked about the red blue, red blue, red blue. Okay, so you think there's going to be a color pattern this month? Yeah. And so how many dots do you think there will be? Two. Two, and they will be what color? Blue. Okay, so uh, we have one prediction of two blue dots. I need two more predictions. Abby. I need to be two oranges. Two oranges, okay. I see a silent agreement happening here. And let's take one more prediction, Marley. Um, I think it's two red dots. Two red dots. So something I noticed that was in common about our three predictions was the number of dots. Can you look your fingers to show me how many dots you think we're going to see? Two. So I see most people are saying we're going to see two dots on our calendar. Why two? Why did you choose two? Harrison, why did you choose two dots for your prediction? Um, because, because. So we're thinking that maybe there's going to be a growing pattern of numbers. That's what I hear, is that we're going to grow our numbers. And so what number comes after one? Two. Two. So we think that there will be two dots, and I heard lots of different predictions about colors. And I said two red dots. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. So Miles, how many dots? It's like magic. Two. Tell me about their colors. Blue and red. And what? A, how many are blue and how many are red? One is red and how many are blue? And one is blue. So we have there's one red dot and one blue dot. Because one and one together makes two. Two. So now is 
something that repeats, it happens again. Today is another wonderful, magnificent, amazing day. How many are on this 10 frame? How many are on this 10 frame, Ollie? Um, two. So who thinks they can lead us in counting how many days we have been in school? Can we be Marley's Echo? 10, 10, 20, 20, 30, 30. Oh, when does an echo happen before or after? Before. <laughs> after. An echo happens after. So we are being Marley's echo. So Marley goes first and we go after. Ready, Marley? 10, 10, 10 20, 20. 20. 100 days of school. What goes with two to make 10? Yeah. What goes with two to make 10 back? Yeah. So, Parker, if you want to hit pause, that's awesome. It'll, it'll, you can absolutely, I'll send it out, but it's a whole nother 12 minutes. Um, so, number corner is about 15 to 20 minutes. So, now they're going to do a number sentence to try and get to 100, which is a big celebration. 100th day of school is a very big deal in kindergarten. Um, so, they'll make a number sentence of how to solve or figure out based on the 10 frames that she showed you or the dots that they've been collecting. They also um, will graph something based on the number of days they've been in school as well. And then they're collecting something, and I believe it's Unifix Cubes this month but um, that they're working on counting. And again, they build number sentences and practice with those again. So that's incredible. I mean, sitting inside a classroom, I mean, and they're, they're excellent. I mean, they are. That's a, that's great. On yeah. it. Yeah. And there's some big ones. And so, so it's kindergarten in Stockbridge or Rochester, excuse me. It's kindergarten and first grade in um, Stockbridge and there's, currently quite the um, competition of who can make a number sentence with a thousand in it <laughs> going on when you go into the one in Stockbridge. Um, they're all trying to like one up each other, but they really understand how to solve that. They have figured that out and you can see that they're picking up on place value and some other things in the mm -hmm. process look so pretty cool. To see. Yeah, there was just so much in there. I mean, there, that was just, lot. oh, it was a packed lesson right there. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> and know? that's only 20 minutes in math class. So right. everybody and has 60 to 75 minutes in math. That's great. I love the silent agreeing, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. she, you know, there's, there's that space for that. There is. It's great. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. That, was, that was wonderful. Excellent. Any further comments on this celebration of learning? Keep it coming. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Okay, well then we'll move on to discussion items um, 11.1, uh, fourth draft of the budget, 2023-2024 budget. So uh, Tara's with Jihad tonight um, okay. for their entire meeting. So I, I can lead us in the budget and then Lindy can pick up um, mm -hmm. where I uh, miss. She can rebound for me Absolutely. and put it back. <laughs> um, and so... I would start by just saying in general, I think as a board, we're gonna need some guidance here. I, I believe where we currently sit with the tax rates, we've got some tough decisions to make um, moving ahead. And part of that is, um, one, it's expenditures in general. Two, it's how do we wanna utilize our revenues? Um, you'll see when we get to the revenue line that as administration, we bumped it up since the last draft you saw to help cover some of the um, expenditure into the one time, our annual payment into the capital improvement funds uh, was the thought process behind that. 
Um, we've made some reduction in FTE that we had originally proposed to increase um, in this current budget draft. Um, we did keep an increase in art, but you'll see that the library position that we had increased, we decreased back down again. Um, and world language. And, and uh, world language as well. So um, a big driving factor for our budget right now is that tuitions are up. We've got the announced tuitions. Um, and so you'll see in your function codes 1101 that out of the $139,090 increase, 91,356 is tuition to Vermont LEAs. You do see an offset of 26,552, so that's in 561 and 562 in the 1101 regular ed instruction. And so I share that to say, your teacher salaries in your, your um, elementary classrooms and in your outdoor and, and pathways is not the driving increase to the 139,090. You actually see that based on staffing versus budgeted, um, meaning who we've hired versus what we have budgeted uh, to previously, that line's actually down. The big driving force there in the budget um, certainly is um, health insurance, as you can see, that's up. But, and remember, health insurance is up 12% for everybody this year. So we're combating that. There's also an additional para to help provide um, social emotional supports. So that's where that, that 139 comes from. And of course, like I just said, started with tuitions. I say all that to say to you, there's not a lot we can touch in there. <laughs> we got to pay tuition. Um, and so that 139.90 is solid. What number are you? At the, oh, top, I see at the top. top. 11 11 one. That's all yeah. your regular ed instruction. Okay. I'm just saying there's not a lot of wiggle room yep. in that area. Um, art is still increased. So you can see that the difference there. That one from point two to point four. So the, the column of difference is the difference from the last uh, right. per, the Chira, draft. Your no, that last budget. From, That's so. this budget. Yeah. Right. It's Twenty. Okay. It's what well, this is. Difference these differences are your current Thank you. year's budget versus what we're proposing to you right now. It's yeah. Back from the prior budget. And this is draft four. Yes. Even though it says draft yeah, three on the yeah, top. Yeah, I just did not get updated. Okay. Tara's had a lot of her I understand. Jamie, what's the Vermont LEA? What does LEA refer to? So those are public schools in Vermont that you tuition to. So it's local educational... Administration. Uh, administration. But those are really the, the tuition schools. My ELAs are all public Sharon schools. Academy, which would be right. under private. Correct. Okay. The, you know, the other area in your budget, um, as far as ex on the expenditure side, that we have any wiggle room in, um, is, you know, frankly, if you go to way down to page seven, um, We we did not we did not carry the high school heating cost in this current year's budget, and we've been trying to figure out ways how to reconcile that. A big part of that was we didn't hire a teacher that we had budgeted, so that covered the cost. So I want to be clear to you that why you see in function code twenty six ten six two four why our energy fuel oil it, it's going up one fuel costs have increased. Um, and we're budgeting for them to stay high at this point in time, based on what we're currently locked in at. The other piece is we're budgeting for the high school. So you'll see it's up 41.624, but you also see that it talks about offsetting um, savings, just the increase in heating fuel that we're predicting for next year, and the fact that we're budgeting for the high school, that's why that lines up. Because we're doing we're we're doing both. We're is what you're saying. We're yes. we're, we're keeping in 
We're keeping in what we currently set at for, for energy for the elementary and, and yeah. so it say say Rochester votes to take over the the building, then we'll have we'll just have an influx of forty one thousand. We'll have some our, extra yeah budget. Okay. Yeah. Expenditure yeah. Yeah. up there. Yeah. yeah. But it probably is but, prudent for yeah, us at no, this time. Yeah. Um, definitely. Yeah, I'm just I'm just showing you where some of these budget the, where it's gone right. just mm -hmm. so you have a sense of what's making up your eight percent. Um, and then the other piece that we've budgeted for in here is on the back page. You'll see the sixty five thousand for capital asset funding. So your bottom line from. In this current draft number four versus what your budget was for 22-23 is up $359,118 or 8.11%. So to go into the revenue page now, there is still, we could increase your local revenue by increasing the money from the what we're predicting as a surplus into more revenue and not putting it away as much away into capital reserves so that's one of the areas that we will need some direction on so you can see the previous year this current budget what we have in is 150,000 and revenues that were contributed to the budget from the prior year's surplus. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're only using 100. Now, part of the philosophy of that was to start to pay that down, meaning that we're not having to rely on surpluses in order to have revenue to offset the tax rate. Because if we don't have that surplus, let's say this year we did, we're expecting that we will again. For one, we had a teacher that we couldn't hire, although we didn't. We'll have a surplus. Mm -hmm. I, I will tell you that at some point, these surpluses are going to get smaller and smaller. And if you look at the general surplus we have within the operating budget, it, it's good fiscal management. We're not running huge surpluses in your district. Um, we're also tightening our belts when we need to um, around expenditures. So I would like to continue to pay that down because if one of these years we don't have a surplus, we're in a hole. We're going to be starting without that hundred thousand dollars in revenue. Right. So the goal would be to start to pay it down. You can see we use one seventy three six, then we went to one fifty. Now we're saying one hundred. If we're feeling like the tax rate is such that this is not the year to do so, for example, when we get to the tax rate sheet, you're going to see the CLA mm. has made a big difference in tax rates versus Rochester and Stockbridge. This is an area as a board that you could get the tax rate down. Mm -hmm. This is a decision you can make. Other, so other, so you're saying putting that surplus towards next year's budget. Otherwise, we would decide as an option to, to put it into one of our capital improvements. So the, and the voters have to approve that. So right. what? So what looks better to the voters? Is it? us just not giving us the 65,000 and putting it in our capital improvements? No, that's, um, the 65,000 is, is that, in our budget right. to go, that we're budgeting for capital improvements. This is- That in will a, be used. No, no. This, this is, we're putting it in as, into a capital improvement account. Into our account. reserve. Yeah, into our reserve. Yeah. This is an I additional, that. we have 169,000 as a, a separate money that mm -hmm. we can decide if we want to, if this proposes that we take 100 of it, and we put it back into our budget to help keep the tax rate lower. And we could propose to the um, ta to the voters that we take 69 and put that into a capital reserve fund. So we're we're putting a good amount of money in, which is yeah. what we want to do. But we that's the discussion we need to have versus the tax rate versus um, the capital. Yeah. Um, and we had decided that um, we we do still want to. Well, last time we discussed that we want to. Um, have a line item in our budget for capital 
um, expenses, yeah. so we, the capital funds, because it, it's it's a statement. It's, that's it's, right. That, that says, say, like, I think it's important what, that that's there. We, we are thinking about our buildings. We we want to continue. Yeah. Okay. Hope that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. And when we get to the tax sheet, I mean, one of the things you'll see as we talk about revenue, in order for us to make a change on the tax rate. One cent is twenty-seven thousand nine nine two and twenty-two cents. Say that again. Twenty-seven thousand nine hundred ninety-two and twenty-two cents is what we need to change in order to change one cent. One cent on the tax <laughs> rate. So we can do that one of two ways, right? We can do it by decreasing expenditures or increasing revenue. Right. And when you look at this tax rate um, before, before the CLA. Um, we are actually down about six cents, mm -hmm. right, from last year. We, we actually reduced the tax rate by six cents, but because of our CLA, it still is increasing our individual town taxes. And that is a story across the state of Vermont. This is not specific to this district at all. Well, right. You sum, you sum the equalized tax rates down about six cents, which means that the two parts of that is well it's it's our expenditures offsetting revenue but then you you divide it through by your equalized pupils and you come out with your education spending per pupil cost of 21,543 and 33 cents mm -hmm. there's no penalty anymore right now on the books but we are still under the excess spending threshold right. you remember for a long time in our this district that was something that was really important. We've actually widened that margin mm -hmm. from a few years ago um, because the cost of everything's going up. <laughs> um, and so you then um, you get your equalized residential tax rate because then you, you um, look at your yield and the yield's really good right now. And the what reason the yield's really good is that we had a surplus in the Ed Fund. And they're projecting to use that surplus to give it back um, as an offset in, ta in taxes. Particularly, the governors talked about they knew the CLAs were going to take a hit, right? There's been a lot of property selling in the state. And so they were hoping to um, use the increased yield to help try to alleviate some of that pressure, which it has in a lot of our towns. Um, with the positive view. The problem we have is, is that when you get to each town and you look at the e equalized tax rate, which is 1.3918, and you then divide through by your CLA, which is at 87.01 in Rochester, which is down 8.62%. Are you guys following me yep. on the tax rate sheet? You come out with a homestead tax rate of 1.5996, which is up just over eight cents or 5.41%. In Stockbridge, the CLA took a 14.12% hit. So you can see that 1.3918 equalized tax rate, you divide through by 75.98%, which is in RSU, that's our lowest CLA. Mm. Um, I have one other town that's just a little higher, but you, Stockbridge is my lowest. Um, and you come up with a, a homestead tax rate of 1.8318, which is a 22 cent hit mm. or 3.73%, a 13.73%. So as a board, it would be really helpful at this point in the game for you to give us some parameters for administration to work at for a next proposal, which would hopefully be a final one yeah. or close to it. And what was really helpful for me in first branch is, for example, they said, we need an expenditure budget under 10%, which we have here already. They were adding pre-K for the first time. So their budget was up significantly. Mm. And then they said, but we also need a tax rate under 10 cents. We're not going to get under 10 cents here without cutting a bunch of programming. Right. Um, but if you could narrow in for us where you're feeling comfortable around tax rate, 
especially at your higher level tax rate in Stockbridge, that then gives us some parameters to come back to you with a few proposals. Um, it is quite scary though that to try to change a tax rate by one cent is uh, $28,000 that has to be cut. Yeah. That's the, or, or revenue that needs to be put in. And I mean, the revenue that we have from our projected surplus would two cents mm -hmm. is all it would all we would be able to do. Um, that's tough. What is it, what is I was feeling more optimistic two weeks ago, but that's before all the announced tuitions came in. Because everybody, I yeah, I thought we were going to be able to tweak the budget some, increase some revenue. I was not expecting tuitions to come in as high as it did. Some of you are receiving districts raised, you know, they're they're well over five percent, right? They're at six, seven percent. Really? Um, and so I I wasn't expecting that, right? I didn't think we were gonna have to be combating ninety-three thousand. You take that off now, you know, that's that's four pennies, right? It's right. three and a half pennies, and right. then you add some revenue. And we're at, you know, we were at 17 cents last year, uh, last month. My goal was to get that tax rate. My hope was around 12 cents is where I thought we could get it. Um, but not now. I didn't expect the increase in the tuition to be as high as it was. Mm. Well, what do we think? You know, to give just to give the board a sense, like the announced tuition at Randolph, Tara would have the exact figure. Do you have it, Lindy? Okay. Which you have students going to is twenty-one thousand. Is twenty-one thousand thirty-one? Mm -hmm. That that was a, a significant jump. They were under twenty last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those and those are numbers we have to pay. I mean, yep. That's. I mean, I share that with you because you have, you have um, eleven yeah. students at Randolph. Yeah. Jamie, the uh, can I, yes, please. Uh, the increase in the last budget we saw, which was beginning in December, uh, dated, and this one, um, primarily for the reasons you spoke to, are those tuition increases that we do not control, um, which is over one hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars, plus something that we did control, and we said we wanted you to increase, so we have a sixty-five thousand dollar building reserve fund that is set aside as a building financial building block when we were needed. So that was the other piece of it. And those added up a total increase of expenditures around $114,000. You then looked at how we could adjust our revenue. And you did it through um, the carryover and um, increasing the carryover and you did it through um, an item you call educational spending revenue. And those two increases in our revenue budget for FY24 is 114,000. So I read that to say that yes, because of these tuition increases, uh, our expenditure is going to have to go up seriously, 114,000, but we've offset that with increased revenues of the same amount. And where I need guidance on is when we go to the, the tax rate um, sheet, which we've been looking at, the one that says FY24 estimated tax rate. When you look at the upper left hand corner, the total expenditures have been increased by that $114,000 from our last budget go around. And for reasons we've been told. And the frustrating thing is those tuitions we can't, can't control. But when you look at less offsetting revenue, the entire $114,000 of increased revenue that is in this, I call draft three or draft four budget, were not totally increased, included in offsetting revenue. Only $31,000 was. And so what happened to that other $83,000 that was going to offset our increases. That's my question because if that's your Act 68 spending, yes, that's the end fund money. Yeah, that you're taxed on right. But why isn't it, why aren't we credited for that here? Be, because 
that your Ag 68 spending is your three three million eight nine five eight nine six. Yes. The eight nine three six oh seven is your it's your local revenues. It's all the money, title funding. It, it it's all those other revenues. It's the hundred thousand dollars. It's your interest. It's the tuition you collect. All of that makes up. Well, I've got out here on um, that eight nine three six the revenue seven. budget. Grand total all revenues. Right. On this, uh, nice it has resume. to balance. Huh? It has to balance. Right. So, do yeah. we get that eighty three thousand dollars additional Act sixty eight yes, revenue? Yes, but you're taxed on it. But we're but we're not allowed that to to utilize that to determine our tax. No. No. All you're doing is saying to the Ed Fund, you need that additional money to pay for your your. You're going to Montpelier and saying we don't have, we need an additional eighty three thousand. That's why you're. That's what you're taxed on. That's why that number is what's divided through by your equalized pupils. That said, this is where I'm, I'm sorry, but I, it, it, this is huge because for Stockbridge we're getting screwed. In my opinion, and uh, the reason is that we're going to the state says we need that extra eighty three thousand. The state's going to do that to balance our budget, but the taxpayers have to pay a tax rate that assumes that we're not going to get it, and that's what I don't understand. Everybody's following me. Mm -hmm. You're saying we go to the state, say, hey, we need from the Ed Fund another eighty three thousand to, to balance, and they go okay, then. Well, that increases your equalized pupil spending bill. That 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 eighty three thousand became part of your you part of your Act sixty eight. No, because it's all it does is offset spending. our spending. It doesn't add to the spending. You know, your revenue and your expenditures total the same. Yep. Okay. Right. So, so I'll, anytime you increase your budget, your Act sixty eight revenue is going to increase, mm -hmm. unless we have a different revenue line for it. Right. We're not able to, there's not more. The only local revenue we were able to put into this offset of is revenue that, was the $31,000 that, that came right. from the surplus. There was That's no right. other offsetting local revenue that we were able to put in there to reduce where we start the calculation, essentially. <clears throat> so, Bill, let's say you took that 100000 out. Yep. Your Act 68 spending is going to increase by 100000 so instead of it saying you take your budget expenditures, yep. instead of it saying less offsetting revenue of eight nine three six zero seven, that would say seven nine three right. six zero seven, and your Act sixty eight spending would say three nine nine five okay. eight nine six, yep. and that's what starts the calculation. And that down. three nine nine five eight nine six is then divided by your equalized pupils, and that's how you get your education spending per cost per pupil. Uh, folks following yep. me? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's why that local revenue would decrease in a penny. So let's say if you bumped the offsetting revenue and you put another 50000 of your service plus in, that would say uh, 943607. And the, ed's, the Act 68 spending would say 3845896. Mm -hmm. And that three eight four five eight nine six is what's divided through by your equalized pupils. Yeah, which changed slightly. Wow. Yeah, it's well. There's just a, a dramatic change in these last two budgets, and uh, the numbers I ran are, are, are as far as tax impact for the, the third of our residents that pay by the property assessed value versus uh, income sensitivity is is um, uh, we're gonna have to think about and uh, this uh, see we've we're in a difficult position because our moral purpose is to take care of the kids and make sure they can get be the best they can be and at the same time we have to uh, uh, make sure that our taxpayers are, what we're doing is, is reasonable. Right. And uh, we're, this is a real potential breaking point. We've got to kind of think about how, um, what we need to do on that. And, 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 and I don't have any clear answers on that other than we're, 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 
looking at something very difficult. I'm not sure. I'm certainly not ready to give you a uh, well, uh, or suggest to the board well, let, uh, let's, strategy, uh, Jamie, at this point. Well, I'd, maybe we could discuss the um, the surplus because that is a, a place to we, that we do have revenue. Uh, we have discussed the uh, extreme need uh, to be able to put that money into a, um, a capital um, fund. Uh, we have made provisions in our budget to be able to fund uh, our capital assets fund. Um, maybe we should, I'd like everybody's opinion about uh, putting more, if not all of our um, surplus, projected surplus money back into the budget. You're, we're essentially giving a fact to the taxpayers. Um, Just like they're talking about doing in the Ed Fund in Montcoder, right? Yeah, $65 million surplus. They, they're giving it all back through the yield. Yeah. Do we feel comfortable with what we have in our capital improvement funds now to move forward with EI as well as having a surplus in that fund for other capital improvements? Right. You know, that that's a question. And then the other thing that my concern is, not personally, but I know that you know there's going to be Stockbridge residents that look at this budget, and what's going to stick out for them is that forty something thousand to heat the high school. They're not going to like that, right. especially when we agreed as a board over a year ago that we wouldn't do that. Right, and we did uh, change our position uh, recently yeah. with the updated mm -hmm. um, information from the repurposing committee. Um, I think the other thing that the realization that this is ours right now, and yeah. and if we don't put money in it to to heat it, and the town doesn't want to take it, then we've got a bigger bill to deal mm -hmm. with. Million dollar. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I don't disagree. I just yeah. My, I, I my, hear my you concern exactly. is that this budget could potentially set us back and, and, and we could be moving in a backwards direction after this merge. Mm -hmm. And that's not anything I think any of us want want to happen. Um, I hear you. So oh, that's, that's the concern. I don't want to give anybody any leverage to start a... Um, I understand. You know, um, so I just quickly added up uh, the current reserve funds, all three of them, mm -hmm. and it, we have, a, a, from what Tara said, we would need this clarified by her, but it was um, 198000 um, that are, it, we have in the all of the reserve funds to, um, at this point. Um, and in this budget, we are discussed, we are proposing putting $65,000 in and so with the EEI project, we would not. We won't have a lot. We won't have a lot, but we will. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely. Um, so. That's not including the 65 or. That's well, not including the 65 okay. that is in this budget. This is what we currently have. That's a little worrisome. Yeah. <laughs> um. And I, I hear that because Stockbridge has always been very uh, capable of funding a reserve fund um, and Rochester when previously um, traditionally returned it all back to the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. um, but that wasn't the right answer either. <laughs> mm. um, what is the heating cost of the high school? I missed that. We're right now. We have well, about four, what was it, 40? So the, it includes the um, elementary and the high school and we should see savings no, that no, 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 that no. will that that is to pay for the heating in Stockbridge Elementary in your high school. So remember the, the, the increase the difference, correct me for the difference is the heating cost of the high school. It's more than forty one thousand right. because you've got some saving. Your Rochester Elementary, you're no longer budgeting for heat. Okay, for so it. Anymore. Right, you're budgeting pellets and you're budgeting propane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this new? Uh, is this the high school? N no, this is Stockbridge Elementary and the high school. And Rochester Elementary has been pulled out of this number because we have put pellets in in, in 
lieu of pellets and propane. Pellets and propane in lieu of um, so that's the, where the increase in propane. Uh, it's sixty thousand dollars roughly. That's. I mean, is there a way for that, um, the high school? You, you know, with with the surplus, can we take a portion and? put it in the Stockbridge Reserve Fund just to say, hey, Stockbridge, we're not, So you yeah, know, I don't know, like just voters, by moving money. We can ask the voters to vote. We can split it around. Um, yeah. What's that? I didn't say that one. Oh, he was just asking if, um, if, if any of the reserve fund could be allocated specifically to the Stockbridge um, Reserve Fund. And we do have a Stockbridge Reserve, have yep. and we do yeah. have a Rochester Reserve. I'm just thinking, I, I see the value in heating the high school. Don't get me wrong. I, I think we need to. I just think that we don't want to give any residents from Stockbridge any leverage that. Mm -hmm. Again, how much? Again, how much money are we talked about? Here? About sixty thousand. Sixty thousand for the high school. So yeah. that's between fifty-five and sixty. Yeah. If Tara was here, she'd tell you exactly. It's, right. it's closer. To so at the max, that's two. Budget. That's a, the max is two cents. Mm -hmm. but that, that. How about the the um, portion that the repurposing committee is? So this is for next year. This is next year. Sorry, mm -hmm. but not for this year. Okay. Is there anywhere else to look for specifically holding over the, the Rochester building? I feel like we had a conversation about looking to find ways to raise money. And I, I feel like it was with the repurposing committee. Did anything come of that? Yes, yeah. yeah, so there. Okay, I'm here. How, hey, JC, I'm here. This is Catherine Shankman from the Repurposing Committee. So we're part of the the Heat Task Force. Right. Uh, that was composed of members of both select boards and um, the school district, as well as the Repurposing Committee. Right. To date, we've reached. So, so we, so uh, <clears throat> Bill uh, had proposed dividing the responsibilities in three different uh group towards three different groups and the repurposing uh committee was to raise around twenty thousand in three months we've raised ten thousand five hundred and thirty five dollars and we have three activities that are scheduled to happen in 2023 so the, we 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 met uh recently with the task force and it was my sense that there was assurance from Bill and from um, Amy that the the heat will be covered this year from the other two sources as well. So we were dividing it basically 2020 20. All right. This year. For the for the current year. Yeah, for, the current for this year. year, because we were told that that the our our set is going to be budgeting it for next year. Last year the the Rochester trustees paid an additional Fifteen thousand over top of what the Rochester town pays as part of being, you know, one of a two-town school district. Okay. Well, I guess it's possible to look at that model again going forward, this three-legged model, because I hear exactly what you're saying, and a budget of uh, an increase in Stockbridge tax rate by that much um, is dramatic. I think putting the responsibilities solely back on our sub next year is moving in a backwards direction. Well, I think so too. And um, I, I, I also am glad to have this conversation about the three tiered approach and also hearing the information about the, the fundraising success and showing that the repurposing committee has a lot of, um, has some support. And I think that's a, a thing that I think it's helpful to bring that up and highlight it instead of just think, oh, what are we going to do? How are we going to cut our budget? There's other ways to kind of grab from the community. Um, a lot of people are behind the, the high school repurposing concept. So I don't know how much the school board can kind of collaborate, but that's I, true. But, but, you know, and I, in principle, we've all agreed to work together towards the an outcome that was going to bit benefit everyone yeah. and we're, we're devoted to that i was listening to this conversation and uh it doesn't appear to me that the increase in stockbridge ta taxes has a whole lot to do with heating the high school I, I don't disagree but they're not going to look at it that way 
that's, yeah, that, no, but don't, you think, don't you think it's very important when you present this information that it gets presented in context? Absolutely. I, that's Absolutely. Right. So it it is two cents, and that is what we're discussing with um, putting more revenue back in is is two cents. Mm -hmm. Um. So, uh, I hear you. I, I agree with you uh, on this line item. I also know the importance of 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 keeping the high school. Oh, yeah. um, and this is going to come to an end. I don't know when the vote is on it, but I know that we, things are happening. Our next agenda item is to talk about the uh, the sale and 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 where we are with the phase one and phase two. Um, things are moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they really are. Maybe we should look at that. Look for next year at at the heating committee coming back with a an approach that doesn't solely put it on the back of the Rochester uh, mm -hmm. stock mm -hmm. school budget. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and as far as increases on um, and and in programs that have been made i mean i look to our administration to provide um programs uh for our kids and if it, i i use whatever you guide us on of what our needs are for um our teachers that's what i support because mm -hmm. i mean i just watched an, a teacher do incredible work with these kids and that's what i want to support so um no, i appreciate i don't i don't want to put any I don't want to put any comments on that part of the budget. I would like you. Yeah, no, I think that's why the, just giving us an overall okay. sense of the direction you want to go. And I heard you, Bill, not want to give direction, but we're going to look to take action by a special meeting right after your March meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. Not wise. Uh, and so, yeah. I hear you on that. We do have some more time, though. Then you do, but I just um, think we got a bigger. Problem. I don't want to take a month. We want to work. Right. It takes and so I, I know I'm. I just think. This is your fourth draft. Starting to narrow in where you'd like us to be would be helpful for us. Yeah, I, I think we need to we need to get that tax rate down. The twenty two cents is is hard to swallow. I I think that um, removing yeah. some of the the cost of the heating of the high school I think is a, a, an approach. I do feel my opinion is to go ahead and put more of that. Uh, um, the fund balance, the Reserve, yeah, the, the yeah, fund right. balance surplus in um, and what maybe was that? that was at what it was. It's 169. We've they've allocated 100 right now, so we have 69 to go into a reserve. Well, to ask the the, but I'm saying I I suggest we tap into that more. So why couldn't rather than this say call it 60,000 for the the high school? Why don't we just call it a third of that? Like the system that we have in place, right? That's what I was. And then, rather than a hundred thousand, if we have one hundred sixty-nine, what would it be if we added another twenty, thirty? So you still would like to put have a little bit, a little, a little bit into the path of Okay. What does the rest of the board feel about that part of the um, revenue and uh, the surplus? Say that again. Um, Pat is recommending that we do indeed. Put more revenue in back into the budget, but we don't do it all. We we keep so there's some. 169. We're, we're right now it's proposed at 100 of it, right? Why don't we go 125, 130, and that way mm -hmm. we're at least getting 30 to 40 thousand that's still going into the capital improvement fund. We decrease the 60 thousand for the high school heating to 20 thousand, and hopefully we can continue the same relationship that we have right now with the um uh the repurposing committee and and the select board the town and and the trustees you bill you have to speak to the trustees because that's the other third yeah so your school trustee um, fund the contract money because they, they're talking about a third a third a third so oh that's, that's we're, we're talking about the, the the rochester um trust funds uh that are under the responsibility of the 
the school board. We're not talking about the Stockbridge uh, Trustees of Public Funds funds on this particular case, which is the high school heating uh, challenge. Um, the right, Stockbridge but, 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 trustees have been contributing to uh, the budgets, the school budgets, uh, as, as long as I've been a resident of but Stockbridge, and we do it in a number of other ways too. So, I also uh, feel are you talking? Are you talking about those other funding, other things other than the high school? What, what are you? Well, let me just talk. I'm talking about the school trust funds, not the the Rochester uh, public trustees of funds, because I don't think there you can count on them for next year. They feel that they did their thing last year, and sure. uh, I understand that you know we're in a process which i guess we're going to speak to in the next agenda item but um it's a process that those of us you know working to realize this are not in full control of because much of it has to do with the state's process and the state's timing as jamie can attest right okay well i um does that give you direction <laughs> okay, so we've provided David with direction and our administration yeah, with no, what, what our feelings are on this. Thank you for this presentation. Um, I know it is hard work, and so. Yes. What yes. question? Um, the, um, the the revenues. Let's just take the revenues. Can they be targeted between the two towns? In other words, having uh, if the revenue source is coming from one town, it's is dedicated to that one town or is it basically go into the it same pot for the, general the entire and i would caution the board from even talking that way yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. no just mm -hmm. going to clarify that okay uh we'll move on no further comments let's move on to 11 2 sale of the rochester high school building update on two rivers out of phase one and two of brownfield study and additional specific from Rochester High School Repurposing Committee. So uh, Catherine's with us and, and Catherine is um, very articulate when it comes yep. to all the things that's been happening. So Catherine, I can fill in any gaps, but I'd love to turn it over to you. Well, okay. I'll try to be articulate. Um, so, so the just to go back to what this environmental assessment, why we're doing it, it has to do with the uh, National Environmental Protection Program or policy, which is called the NEPA, which is an essential piece of being eligible for federal money. And that's been broken down into phase one, phase two, and then phase three. We have completed phase one. The consultants were in the building briefly uh, in October, and their reports have just been finalized and submitted. Jamie got a copy. We, the town of Rochester got a copy. Um, and Jamie uh, and Sarah Wright from Two Rivers, uh, Vic and Dick Robson, myself, uh, we have a new um, interim project manager, Liz Curry. We all met to discuss um essentially the results of the reports and what the next steps would be so there are few and and, and phase one is essentially a desk review with a brief on-site um assessment and so we we dealt with hazardous materials we dealt with brownfield uh and uh the results I, I thought were not too discouraging. I don't know how you felt, uh, uh, Jamie. I think the greatest uh, issue that just came up from the last meeting has more to do with the floodplain. The floodway would pretty much resolve that issue uh, by property boundary adjustment. And um, Dubon King is in the process of doing a survey for that to happen. Uh, with respect to um, the phase one we have some hazardous materials um but it didn't seem too critical there's uh, some lead paint on two doors that go off the uh, what was formerly the library that large space in the high school um and 
there with some mold and most of that will be remediated in the actual renovation process. Uh, they found it in some paint in the, uh, oh, and PCBs were also included. That's not normally a requirement, but the state wanted us to do that. And PCBs were found in the Eastern portion of the building, paint on the doors, the windows and the cinder blocks adhesive. Uh, but there, there wasn't enough. Uh, there wasn't a high enough level to kick in the federal regulations. Uh, and DEC, which is the Department of Environmental Conservation, they're not going to require us to take any action on PCBs at this point. The asbestos. Um, I think the report that was submitted was 2019, and they didn't. They weren't happy with that report. But then Jamie. Um, stated in our meeting, there was a more recent uh, asbestos survey, and that was done in 2021, and he submitted that to Sarah. So I guess they're going to digest that, right, Jamie? Yeah, I I have not submitted that yet. It's on my to-do list. I okay. submitted the um, mold inspection. Oh, the mold. Okay, thanks for that. So then the other thing is the brownfields. We know we have a 10,000-gallon underground fuel tank, which is going to be removed. Uh, there was other concerns about uh, oil leaks from a compressor, and then, which has surprised me, potential contamination from any surrounding properties. So I don't know what all that is going to mean. Uh, right now, the, the reports have gone to uh, DEC, again, that's Department of Environmental Conservation, and they will then respond uh, to those reports. A work plan will be the next phase. Uh, and and then we go into testing, which is phase two. That's on-site uh, sampling. And after phase two, there, that's when um, the actual mitigation uh, efforts will be identified. So the money for this, uh, we're hoping will all come from uh, various state agencies. The town of Rochester, has submitted a Brello application. And just today, finally, DEC responded uh, to Pat Harvey's uh, request for a meeting because it's got to be a warn meeting. I think she's done, she did that, wow, back in September. So we, we finally got a response today. And after the meeting that we had on the 3rd, uh, where Liz Curry really stressed the, uh, uh, floodplains as an essential issue moving forward because we, we were all under the impression that the floodway was the big deal. In fact, we were told that the, the no-go uh, for federal money was having the property located in both the floodway and the floodplain. We're resolving the floodway portion of it, and now we're focused on the floodplain. The consultant architect, Greg Gossens, put out several um, suggestions for uh, mitigating uh, where the building took water in. And, uh, and Liz Curry said, we absolutely have to have uh, all of that specifically done by an architect and then get approved. So right after that meeting, uh, Dick Garobson put out um, uh, an email to Greg Gossens and he responded also today saying, that he will be available for any part of this project that we want him to uh, uh, to be involved with. So that's a good thing. And then um, on Friday, the 10th, and Lindy, I've been meaning to email you about this. On Friday, the 10th floodplain manager for our district, his name is John uh, uh, Brooker Campbell, is coming to do an on-site uh, uh, look-see at where the, you know, how the auditorium took in water. We're working with him to get whatever mitigation plan we decide on approved. So, and here's, here's the other thing we, we learned the other day, which was, I mean, it was just one more piece of this journey that even though the NEFA is standard and all the protocols are stand, standard, each federal funding agency, for instance, we've been working with um, USDA, each one can put their own sort of filter on, on whether they accept the results of the NEPA. So that's just a whole other la layer of bureaucratic stuff that we, we have to go through. And that's what this whole process has been, bureaucracy, bureaucracy, bureaucracy. And I wondered sometimes if we had known in 2020, February, three years ago this month, what this up
would be if we would have started it with such naive enthusiasm. But I think at the heart of all of us is that we really do believe that this building is an asset, an asset to not only Rochester, but to the community. And in fact, it has a lot of captured energy in it already. Materials have already been used to build it. <laughs> it's already a space, you know, if you were to build that building today, it would cost you so much more than what the quotes are for renovating it. And what we hope for is that it's gonna be a building that'll be used not only by the school system, but by the whole Quintown area. So. I hope we can keep that positive outlook and not just feel like, oh, what a burden, you know, heating the high school. If Because it was built on a slab, if we don't heat it, we risk the slab heating and we risk losing the entire building. So, any just questions? One, one other thing to add. So, the, the, I will be joining the walkthrough on the 10th as well. Um, and I think Pat Harvey's going to join the walkthrough as well. And Pat's on tonight as well. And she's been attending these meetings as well as a representative from the Rochester um, Select Board. The, yes, you have. Um, I would let the board know that uh, Rochester is due for AOE PCB air quality testing um, in the next six months. And my sense is based on the fact that we own that building that they're going to probably do air quality testing in there. I have not been able to confirm that with the agency. Um, and so even though that there's not a requirement to do air quality testing based on the phase one, if you hear me talk about the high school being tested, that would be why, is because it's, it's required by the agency as part of that legislation. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other questions? For discussion? Um, let's see. Uh, I, I think in some of the the, the uh, paperwork coming back and forth, uh, you had uh, mentioned why we're having to delay having a purchase. And perhaps you can oh. see it. Yeah, sure. So, so we had thought earlier that we were going to be able to hold an acquisition vote in March, but because, <coughs> because we don't have all the results, all the information, and we won't for a while yet, uh, that it was premature. We, we've always committed to the fact that the voters of Rochester will be fully informed. And so um, Sarah Wright did a revised calendar uh on that and she said that the soonest we could even hope to vote would be in august because we really have to do the phase two testing and before doing the testing sampling the work plans got to be developed so those are the next two stages and uh i think did i uh, jamie did i send you the four page report that's going to be printed in the rochester town uh yes. report Okay. And so, I, I asked, I hope that that got forwarded to the Stockbridge town report too. There was, I asked them to reach out to you for that. I'm, I, if you asked me and they, I mean, I'm sure I sent it on. Uh, right. I can go back and check because that was several weeks ago now, but uh, I'm pretty sure I sent it out. So that, that was, a, that didn't have as much information as we have now gotten this week, right? Because we're talking about two meetings that happened on January 31st and on February uh, 3rd uh, with Sarah Wright to kind of go through these reports and really break them down and develop the next steps. So, um, and as soon as that gets all totally clarified, that will be put into writing, not just a verbal report to you at the town, but something in writing so that people can really review it. But the, but the important next step that uh, my takeaway was on January 3rd, I mean, on February 3rd, uh, was the fact that we absolutely have to nail down this floodplain issue. Because if we go ahead and do mitigation steps to prevent the water from coming into the building where it entered uh, uh, during Irene, and that doesn't change the equation because the building still exists on the floodplain, we need to know that and we need to know what to do about it. Excellent. And I believe uh, steps are being taken to um, to change the property 
line. Yeah, but that's that's different. We thought that that's was going to be that's the issue. That's the flood way. That's the flood way. And now we're that's finding that's the flood plane. It, it was, it's the first Friday's time. Friday's going to be a very important meeting. Okay. Great. Yeah, Friday's meeting is going to be very important. I'm glad that uh, both Jamie and Pat are going to be there. Uh, we're going to learn a lot of information, I hope, from uh, the floodplain manager. Again, his name is John Brooker Campbell. And uh, we also invited Grace Vinson, who is the environmental, uh, the state environmental officer, who in late June was the one who notified us that, hey, this building is located in both the floodplain and the floodway, and that's a non-starter for federal money, which was pretty shocking to learn at that stage. Uh, but we were told at that meeting that included Josh Hanford uh, and uh, Nate Cleveland and Grace Vinson, that if we you know, deal with getting the floodway, uh, the property, the property out of the floodway that we need to, that we, we should go forward. And we have done that. We can, we keep moving forward. The, the thing that I have found that has been a little frustrating is that in dealing with all these agencies, it seems though information is kind of siloed within certain agencies so that they give you information related to what they do. But that's not all the information that you're going to need. I wish there was a roadmap that we had that we were given at the start of this. But anyway, we're, we're working on it. I can imagine. Excellent. Thank you very much for the update. Greatly appreciated. Yes. Thank Greatly you. appreciated. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, so we have board development. Study chapter three. Um, does anybody want to take five minutes on it or we want to push it off again to the next meeting? I wish we had dinner beforehand like the other superintendents do. <laughs> I think you remember? Most, I'm sorry. I think this will be quick. I think this is gonna be a quick chapter. I think we okay, can do great. it. I don't think we should push it. I mean it's just getting no. really cool. Okay. Because the next uh, chapter, chapter four, is new board members. Okay, perfect. And yeah. we want to make sure that's that we're time for time consuming. Jessica, uh, I think the most important thing. And this is all about the superintendent. To read it. The chapter. Right. Um, and then if we have time to discuss what we've read. Okay. Um, and that doesn't, it depends on how much time we have. Uh, this chapter three was uh, superintendents. What, what does it take to be a great superintendent? When I read it, uh, I felt very good about that, but it also re reflects a lot of those attributes of a good superintendent are also, in my mind, a good attributes of a good effective board. Now, the uh, superintendents are responsible to us, but we need to be farsighted. We need to be able to, to build a, a culture of respect and trust um, and and build from, from uh, and, and, and have strength in what we're doing and, and oversee what's going on in a, in a capable way and so doesn't our superintendent um and the relationship between boards and superintendents i read this book is so true we don't trust or he doesn't trust us um or doesn't believe that we know what we're doing or could care less we're sharing things, a moral compass yeah share that compass it falls apart so I'm just wondering if anybody wants to share any insights that they got from that chapter uh, with us. Well, I, um, you know, what stuck out is on page 62, it said uh, they're doing this, they're talking about a specific superintendent and um, the practice to ensure that prior to any action, the board is fully engaged and informed. He always makes sure the board understands the why of the program before they're asked for approval. And I started this, and I said, I think this is very important. And I think that we are doing this. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. And Patrick, you were saying something about uh, the, the moral. Uh, uh, yeah, I think just being in line, the school board being in line with the superintendent as well as other districts that we all share the same beliefs in, in what we're trying to accomplish. Makes One it, thing that the SU board has done in the past year is uh, in the um, evaluation of the superintendent. Um, I think for the first time we really had um, a development of goals um, that the full SU board reviewed as well and 
we were in sync. And it was very, this, this wasn't kind of just general stuff. These were very specific goals. And the SU board voted uh, to be responsible as well to help um, the superintendent as well as some other things that the SU board wanted to do. So it's, we're kind of putting into practice um i think what the, the core governance books was talking about i agree and i can definitely tell that pat has read his book because look at how messy it is well my dog ate my book <laughs> i'm not kidding you <laughs> so that's that's a good that's a good sign yeah. when you see it looks well used <laughs> I, I got it from just the <laughs> it's not like the dog ate his homework. It made him look like he did his homework. Oh, Great. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to say, I mean, I kept in reading the chapter, I was like, well, Jamie does this. Oh, Jamie does this. Like, it was really cool to see. And it made me, uh, what kept coming up for me was, man, we got to talk about those goals again. Because I don't feel like we really, like, you know, as far as this chapter goes, I'm like, we could do more work on being more cohesive and and focused on the goals and 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 thinking about them and kind of have them more solid uh as a as a board because you know i was on the committee but so we had all our big dreams and talks and but we haven't spent a lot of time as a full board on them so that's what came up for me is keeping them forefront in, in what we're yeah. doing yeah, yeah. exactly Pat? to kind of piggyback on that like i noticed uh there was one district example that they they were actually holding three um board retreats a year yeah and i i could see the value in that i feel like we we got a lot done in our retreat like as we said previously i think it's uh we don't necessarily have this agenda in front of us and we kind of are free flowing and i think it it's a round table discussion yeah i think it really of, allows yeah. us to to connect and yeah. to find that moral compass that we're talking about and, and, and the values that we all share. Yeah. Um, which I, I think improves this, you know, the, yeah. this format. I like the idea of the dinners before the meetings too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you were talking about from the <laughs> It was one of the examples. One of the superintendents was holding dinners with some of the staff and the board members. It was, it was, it was kind of nice. And I know we used to do that when we were in all those merger meetings, because oh, we yeah. they would take so long. I I remember um, it was Bruce um used to you know pay someone to just bring a bunch of pizzas, um and that way nobody was focused on being hungry or needing this or needing that it was more casual and we were able to have some more conversations so when it's time you know that we have maybe some of these retreats or maybe ahead of a, a lengthy meeting like this things to keep in mind to kind of you know keep the energy going or or start it off on the right foot kind of thing you know yeah that's a good point you got a full of meals out there. Yeah, I almost <laughs> went and got to them. Let's go well, preheat the oven. Right. <laughs> yeah. Good, good meals. microwave. Good meals, too. Well, 30 years ago, the uh, Rochester board had a retreat at the Fire and Ice <laughs> restaurant. Oh, nice. <laughs> Great salad bar. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> No, it, it is a, a valid, I mean, we, we joke about it, but it actually is a, a pretty valid idea for, you know, lengthy meetings. It's a camaraderie. It, yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, that was actually a nice way to, to, to end the meeting. Yeah, if we could just yes, keep going. Yes, on the um, Stockbridge. Oh, right. We do have one more. I put it on, sorry. I put it on my other agenda here. I switched agendas. Okay, excellent. Um, if there's no further discussion on the um, our uh, book club book, then <laughs> let's move on to uh, just quickly that um, the Stockbridge Town Planning Committee is in the process of uh, revising their town uh, plan, uh, which has to happen by law. I don't know how many, how often. Um, this is the year they're doing it, um, and. So they, we're lo they're looking to update the um, education part of their town plan. Um, I would recommend um, that somebody volunteer to to go to their meetings and to be a part of um, helping them to revise the 
uh, education um, update, you know, the, the education part of the town plan. Um, I know that they were looking maybe for some specific statistics. So with the support of the administration to, to, um, to do that, that would be my recommendation. They'll have a comment on it. Yeah, I think um, I was part of the process back in 2012. Um, and we reached out as, as the chair of the planning commission, reaching out to the school committee at that time. And they, we didn't have our set. We just yeah. had our separate. Um, and um, for whatever reason, we didn't get any response. And so I remember writing the, the chapter and basically kind of winging at what I felt was <laughs> in the best interest of the town of Stockbridge relative, and it wasn't me, that went through the whole planning commission and the select board, and we had public hearings up and down, and was, we had a, a survey, um, all those sorts of things. But I see it as an opportunity for our set to not only guide, but to provide, you know, concrete suggestions, um, both in the text, which needs, the information needs to be updated and made more accurate, but also in three things, the, the goals for the education of, uh, that the, the town wants to support, the policies they want to support, and what recommendations they have going forward for the next eight years. And I'd love to be able to, this is, this is our bread and butter. What do we think? Um, so I was wondering whether, you know, um, I'm willing to take the lead on this, but it'd be great to be joined by a, a, a member from Rochester and another member from uh, Stockbridge, and we could zoom it, whatever the case is, and, and come up with some concrete edited chapter that we could then return to this board. And and I don't think it should take us a long time, but um, I think it's important for the board to kind of weigh in on it. Um, yeah, me too. I was having, when I got the email, I was like, I'm not sure how to respond to this because I have a lot of personal ideas of what I think you know yeah. for yeah. school and stock writ you know a lot of them and that's why i was interested in being on the goals committee so i i hesitated to respond because my response is very personal and we're a unified district so i think it seems appropriate for the goals committee i know that ethan is gone now i don't know if someone else would want to join and kind of revamp the goals committee and kind of with you know with some other meetings with the purpose of developing this language. Yes. Instead of just having one person go to the meetings, you know, on behalf of the full board, I feel like we need some more input. Oh. Yes. Um, Bill, what, what's, I mean, in the text that you wrote for the, the previous plan, I mean, what, what sort of information, information are they looking for? I mean, are they saying, oh, trying to plan whether or not they'll have a school here or yeah i'm curious about that too. that's mm -hmm. sort of, well sort they have a background a lot of it is history the history of education in stockbridge is fascinating we used to have 17 schools yeah okay <laughs> yeah. And, uh, um and uh and how they whittle it down we used to have a, a middle school high school until it burned down um and uh where was that but, so there's some history that needs to be updated then they have statistics about uh, enrollment and statistics about uh, performance, student performance goes way back on or you should take a look at it. Uh, you'll go, what? Um, so those things have to be updated. Back then we had a survey. Uh, one of the survey questions was or statements was, um, I believe having a local school strengthens our community. That was one of the statements and overwhelmingly it was surveyed and it was statistically very high. I agreed with that. Well, that helps drive a lot of things about yeah. having a, a local school. Another one was um, it makes sense for parents to have a choice on where to have their kids go to school, you know, after. And that was popular. Well, uh, the Planning Commission has done their own survey and we haven't gotten the results yet. But one of the things will be is to, to, for us to understand what the results they've got on any questions or statements having to do with education. The recommendations are not, it's not like a full-blown strategic plan. We've got a strategic plan, but there's some basic 
uh, things that are important, and and um, one of them is the importance of having a, a having a, a quality public education. And you'd want the town in its education chapter to we want the best we can get, and uh, so we can help shape exactly what that sounds like or feels like. Um, so anyway, it's, it, it's late, but I think it's worthwhile. And uh, Justine, I'd love to join you and I'd love to have somebody from Rochester to join us and, and see what we can craft this out. Uh, Lindy, we'll need some update and information uh, on data. The Planning Commission is having a public hearing on the 14th on Valentine's Day at the Meeting House. And I, I plan to go just to listen in. I don't think they're going to present much. I'm hoping they'll present the results of the survey. But um, I think we can get a lot done, Justine, can't we, in, in March? I mean, excuse me, in February and have something to show for, for our Mar March meeting? Yeah, I think a lot of the legwork is already done from the Goals Committee. I just think tailoring it to this and maybe, um, you know, more specific to what the goal is for the Planning co Commission. So. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I think it would take maybe a meeting and then bringing it back to the board, obviously, um, to make sure it's sounds good. well. Um, what this is an official board committee that you're talking about? The goals committee. The was. goals committee. The goals committee. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. Because yep. if, uh, if there's volunteers that just want to work together and bring something back to the board, it makes meetings. Um, a little easier to conduct because when it's an official uh, board sanctioned committee, you need an agenda and minutes and board right. meetings. And so, um, public access, but right, I you know, I'd recommend that that maybe Just some, 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 some maybe Bill, you would volunteer and maybe anybody who has any input would could talk to Bill about okay, but that would be my suggestion. Um, what okay. is, okay. does that seem appropriate? Yeah, I mean, if it's just Justine and Bill, I mean, if we get to three, then it's certainly looking like a committee. Right, we lost um, Ethan, so we're not a committee anymore. That's why I brought it up. I, mean, I guess, I, mean, you know, if one person volunteered and the, an input was yeah. given to them, yes. yeah. uh, you know, maybe Justine volunteers and, and Bill yeah. gives input to Justine. Um, yeah. I'll give input to Bill. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you, that's very helpful. Um, just as a note on, on the subject of, Committees, I guess it's been determined that the the, um, the repurposing committee is in fact a a town yes. committee. Yes. So we've had to switch to having it as a public a warned public meeting and minutes yes. and yeah. all that. So. Yeah. That's a great suggestion. Thank okay. You. No, but for a while, people thought it was a I'm school district sure. committee, and I had to yeah, clarify to them. Yeah, I know <laughs> they did. So I, I, I want to go back to the board. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I meant like during the discussion. Okay. Yep. Okay, that would be I'll great. I'll be back in touch. Okay. All right. All right. So we're now on to new hires and resignations. Okay, that's great. And oh, part-time custodian. Yeah. Yes. Oh, we do have a part. <laughs> that's a hire. That's a hire. Okay. Good. <laughs> good question. Question, uh, Mary Ellen Willard has just started recently as our part-time custodian in Rochester. Okay, so um, how does that work with the uh, contract? Uh, so labor? the contract cleaning crew has not been able to continuously staff the building. Oh, so okay. we've been kind of... Um, we've broken that. It, yeah, yeah, that contract is... Okay, yeah. yeah. So it, she started last week. Wonderful. Yeah. And it's support steps. So you don't have to take you don't have to take action on our support right. step. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Uh then is there any public comment? I don't probably don't no, no public. public. <laughs> okay, great. So our uh next meeting is going to be Tuesday, March seventh at 5 30 at the rochester campus and google meets any future agenda items um can be yeah, forwarded got, to me <laughs> we've got the well we've got the budget budget um we also have um maybe a solar update a, yeah we got solar for action 
And I think 11.2 is going to be back on the agenda for next month as well. Okay. Because we'll have that update around what we find out this Friday. Yes. Yes, please. Chapter update. Four. And chapter four. Yes. <laughs> Great. Yeah, we keep this moving on. Now it was very that was a great discussion. I'm glad we had it. Um that, that, that's great. Robert. I uh, just want to inform everybody that, that I and my wife are taking off for Florida. We'll still still attend the meetings, but we'll be leaving on the hopefully the 19th and staying down there through the end of March. So okay. I won't be available for, oh, lucky for you. meetings. I know. <laughs> oh, <that's awesome. laughs> Robert, can you zoom? <laughs> yes, I can. Oh, okay. So I, I'll I'll participate from the beach. <laughs> He's not going to just close his location. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Enjoy your trip. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, if there's no further business, then I entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Yes, I have to ask. Thank you. you. Oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> that is true. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.